welcome back to my channel this is week i hope you are well if you aren't too familiar i am a massive bookworm i read so many books i think last year i read like 86 books or something and the year before that was 88 all of my goodreads app and so far this year already in february in january i read 13 books one three i don't know how i got through that but it meant other things slipped like i'm trying to write my own book so the writing wasn't as fluid as I wanted it to be so I still did well but yeah I just had some really good books this month a real mix some were a bit dead than others uh, and others I was just like wow I'm so glad I read that but yeah I read mm, of these ones oh my gosh these and then one more library book and another on my kindle yeah you can see my current collection that is still to be read. Before I forget when I've read books I often put them on my depop so I'll try and link that below if I remember so you can grab a bargain and get some of these books as well. My aim here is to talk through each book and just say if I liked it or not and then if you're interested maybe you've stumbled across this video wondering should I read it or how does someone else feel about this so yeah I'm just gonna start straight in. This one Good Girl Complex by L. Kennedy. This has been sat on my shelf for ages and I finally got round to it. I'm gonna say I didn't realise it was quite so young adult. I knew it was like new adult but this feels quite young still and quite like good girl meets bad boy in a way. So there's Mackenzie, Mac, who meets bad boy Cooper, who works in a bar, set in the USA. She has just got into college, but she already has her own successful business. And she's been dating this guy, is his name Preston, I think, for ages. And he's like really wealthy, but it turns out things aren't all they seem. She and Cooper meet. There's this underlying thing that Cooper and his friends don't like rich kids. There's a plot to steal her away from Preston and things just spiral out from there. And it's a bit like, I don't know, a bit not wishy-washy, but like, like I said, girl meets boy, classic kind of thing. And I just want something a bit more different. So yeah, that would be going on my Depop. It was okay. TikTok maybe do it, bit book talk. So yeah, it was all right. It's not one I would have picked up otherwise. A pretty colorless. Yeah, I won't be reading the sequel though. If you liked it, I can see why. So. Yeah, that is Good Girl Complex. My gosh, this next one, I had high hopes for this. I was like, I just need a calm, easy read. This was, we just clicked Annabelle. It was, but it was so dull, so dull. I was getting through this like at the start. I was like, okay, this is all right. It reminded me a bit of like Sophie Kinsella or not quite a page tune, but those kinds of like easy girl chick lit reads. But to be frank, it's set between Reading and Basingstoke both places which I am very familiar with but what a place to set them. The storyline paired with that as well. We have Izzy who's like a wannabe influencer and her numbers and followers they're just not going up until she meets a guy at work. I can't remember his name but he's basically a bit of a prick. He's bit up himself and they make this like plot packed whatever to pretend they're in a relationship online and they put this on their social feeds and their followership goes up but the subplot of this is Izzy has met Aiden who she first saw when her brother died a few years back and he was basically there looking after her and then she wanted to thank this stranger until she sees him around this time. She's like, oh my gosh, starts to fall for him. But he doesn't know that she's got this followership thing going on with this guy. And it's basically a lot of like, umming and ahhing. And then I felt a lot of these chapters, you want something that ends with a bit of suspense or like, oh, what happens next? But this was just so safe and just a bit boring. And I won't lie. I think I got to like, I can't believe I read this far, like 70%. And I was like, I'm just not enjoying this. So I literally went through each chapter just literally skimming. And I was like, okay, yeah, fine. Ugh. I was just so bored with this book. And it's such a shame because it's like a pretty cover. And it's also very similar to this book, which is by the same publisher, HQ or whatever. Literally almost so similar, like the sh same shades and everything. So I'm hoping this is like a bit better and there's not a whole, whole waste of time because this has been on my shelf for ages as well. But yeah, back to this. It's just too safe, a bit boring. Could it be love at first light? I want something that's not based on technology all the time. Yeah, it's quite dissatisfactory and it was just too plain. Such a shame. I'm sorry, Annabelle. I am really pleased about this next one. So this was in the Waterstones book of the month, like at some point in 2022, earlier on in the year. I found this in a charity shop, The Castaways by Lucy Clark. I've seen loads of her like on social media and stuff. It sounds really good. And I thought like, okay, it's set on an island. I don't know if I'd like that, but this is like quite, it's a thriller, but beautifully written. I don't know how she's done it, but I love this. So we have sisters Erin and Laurie. One of them has been involved in a plane crash. 
a few years ago and the other sister is a journalist trying to piece together what happened because no one else is doing it. It's basically a beautiful telling, albeit tragic, the story, but it's that right balance of getting this story told, all the compelling bits that happen. I always go something away. Like. And the audiobook is just as good. I like gobbled this up. I looked, I looked forward to reading this and so much so like, I don't know if you could, see, yeah, you could just about see if I bought all of her other books because they don't seem to be in any of the libraries and I can't find them in charity shops because I guess everyone else has got their hands on them. Yeah, really good. I can't wait to read the rest of her books. And yeah, I'd recommend following her, Lucy Clark, on social media because she has some like gorgeous content. It's all set by the sea or like abroad and everything. And like Indonesia is like another one. This is set in Fiji of all the places. So yes, I was like dreaming of sand and shores and everything. So yeah, really recommend that if you're after a good thriller and it's not quite so dark. It's set in the sea and the sun. First things first, if you're going to read this, you have to have a sarcastic, satirical mindset. And it's a very sensitive topic. I'm completely like flabbergasted that I even picked this up and I paid money for it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it was about this, but I was like, of all the like crap that's going on in politics at the minute, I was like, I just want something that would be a bit more uplifting in a way. And seeing, reading between the lines of what's real and what's not. I mean, like it, like I said, it's pure satire. So don't go into this thinking it's going to be an actual diary of a Tory MP. You can make up your own mind if you want to read this book or not just because it's by a Tory. I mean, I'd like to remain impartial on this matter. But, I mean, you've got Priti Patel, who's a dominatrix. The Tory guy, he's in love with Liz Truss. Therese Coffey and Gavin Williamson are having a baby. Yeah, I'm not gonna say any more on that just because it is a very sensitive subject for a lot of people, politics. I don't know how many times I have to emphasis, emphasize this. Satire, sarcasm, there's nothing more to say on that. Otherwise, I quite enjoy this, it's quite funny. My next one, I don't have a physical copy, but I will put a picture here if I remember. It is The Other Passenger by Louise Candlish. Now this, I'd never heard of her. This book, it follows couple Jamie, I believe. Jamie and his wife, Mel, and they meet another couple. No, it's Jamie and his wife, Claire, meet another couple, Amelia and Kit. And it all starts off with Jamie on a boat because he is a barrister in, barista, not barrister, barista in a coffee shop in Waterloo, and he commutes there by the boat on the Thames each morning. Kit also does the same and it's basically the disappearance of Kit and he has been being interviewed by the police. I found this really really slow to get into and I won't lie I got to the 75% mark so about 300 pages which is almost the whole book and then it all changed. The last 100 pages I was like oh my gosh there's this massive twist and I think my eyes bulged because I was like what and I raced through the end in like a night I think. Big twist I can't wait to read more of her books. Basically even though it's in first person narrative by Jamie who's being interviewed and accused by the police for Kit's disappearance they believe everything the narrator says. That's all I say on that one. Oh Dolly. Dolly Alderton, dear Dolly, I love Dolly Alderton's work, fact or fiction. I loved her first book, Everything I Know About Love, which is also a TV series, which I'd highly recommend. I think they're going to do a sequel as well. Second one, Ghosts, which is fiction, but you can see the lines between her life and the fiction, fictitious book. Dear Dolly is basically an accumulation of her columns from The Guardian. She's basically the agony aunt. So the person writes in with a question, she will answer them. It's just basically over three or four pages and it is separated into different categories dating friendship relationships family sex breakups and exes as body and soul it is really addictive to read like you can literally like zap through each of those and she she's just so witty so funny and warm and just like relatable at points like she really touches on like emotions and stuff that everyone can relate to and i just highly recommend this if you like really want a nice pick me up or something to make you laugh on your own yeah just really nice and it's like you're having a nice warm cup of tea with Dolly. Next, I'm quite disappointed this one. It is A Court of Frost and Starlight. It's the fourth book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. So there's three chunky ones. There you go, well chunkier. First, second, third. Second one is my favourite. I love this. Such a good book. But this one, ugh, pointless. I'm sorry, I don't see the point of this. I mean, it was fine, but I think if you took this out of the series, it would still work on its own. Like, I literally don't know what this adds. It's basically an extension of Feyre as High Lady now in the Night Court, who she's like mated, married to Rysand. And it's basically just an extension of them humping and then Nesta's hatred for Cassian. And like, you can just see how like tiny this is. And I expected like good things, but on this occasion, it just didn't really 
float my boat. Yeah, there's still one more to go, this one, which I'm hoping to read, like, I'm saving this for, like, if I go on holiday this year, so I'm looking forward to reading that. And I've actually heard much better things about this. And, like, this is actually people's favourite books, and it's based on Nesta and Cassian. So, yeah, sad for that one, but it's very cute. Look at that. <laughs> These books are going to go down before they go up again. Next is a Lisa Jewell one, Watching You. <laughs> I've tried reading Lisa Jewell book before, The Family Upstairs, which has received rave reviews, but I don't know what it is. I just could not enjoy it. I just found it such a chore. And even the audiobook, I just couldn't get through it. This, I read it and I listened to the audiobook as well, which saved time. It was okay, but I honestly like, you know, thriller crime books have you guessing like who done it and it's kind of like a confusing kind of way but it works its way out this was frustratingly confusing i couldn't piece together the times dates places of everything and just none of the characters were enjoyable people and when i'm reading a book i don't want it to be a chore i want to be able to move along with the plot and see where it goes but it basically i can't even summarize if it does it follow current person someone's been murdered and then i don't know if it flips between being children and then now but everyone's related and they live on the same street set in bristol and i don't know about you but this was an underwhelming ending but i'm gonna read another of her books i've got the girls up there. So we'll see, and who knows, I might give the family upstairs another go. This next one was actually a recommendation from my boyfriend and then something I completely would not have picked up. It is a very dense book, should we say? It's Thin, It's Circe by Madeline Minner. I mean, I've mentioned this before on my blog, books that are nominated for prizes, shortlisted by her, really mixed feelings. This is based on like Greek mythology and it's like gorgeous telling of like the gods, goddesses and everything where Circe is banished to an island by her father and her family, her sisters, whatever. Her family are vile, but it turns out the story basically, I found it quite slow to start, but then the story is mainly when she's on the island. So it's about love, friendship. Basically, it's not a genre I would select. I would not have got this, through this if it wasn't for the audiobook. When I was reading this, I found it really difficult it's very small print and there's a lot in there but sometimes I found some bits dragged out over so many pages a few years have passed and it is like covered in like three lines <laughs> so yeah it's a bit jumpy but the writing is quite powerful and Petita Weeks who narrates this phenomenal gorgeous voice and also makes it so compelling and brings each character to life so yeah I'm really on the fence with this one but yeah I'm glad I read this glad I got through it yeah I'd recommend someone going out of their comfort zone and I do like this thought of someone else recommending a book and he enjoyed it as well so yeah yeah next one I read on my kindle and listened to the audiobook really quickly it's a Marianne Keys book I'll put it here a picture if I have it it's Watermelon by her Marianne Keys it's set in 90s Ireland I think it's her first like proper novel and it's kind of like chiclet again it's really thick but it's one of those books where it's like short chapters big text and like basically just quite witty and charming irish humor although it is based on our protagonist claire who's part of the walsh family series and basically she's just had a baby she's given a birth to baby kate and her husband james has decided to tell her at this moment while she's vulnerable and can't move he is leaving her for another woman I won't lie, Claire seems quite self-absorbed. I mean, she's great. She's got baby Kate, she's looking after her. But the whole book, I don't know, just something wasn't sitting right with me. But also what's more frustrating is James. Just like, you know you're going to be a father. And then like, it's like he almost forgot that this baby existed. And then like, we get introduced to her other sisters because Claire has decided to take her and her baby back to Ireland to live with her parents for a while while she's on maternity leave. Basically, it's about love, family, friendships, all that kind of good jazz and yeah like i said chiclet it's really easy to race through really easy reading and i do like a good irish novel so yeah i'm gonna read more of hers i've actually started rachel's holiday is okay i'll report back i've got one more frustrating one before i get onto two really good ones remember what i said about literary fiction books oh it's such a pretty cover i mean gorgeous and it was also in the between the covers book club with sarah cox on like the bbc this is like a novella it's like what just over like 
100 pages, like 115 pages. Really quick to get through. This is going to be short. Pointless. I don't know what I could tell you that I learned that I read about this. Apart from there's this guy. I can't even remember his name now. Bill. Bill Furlong. He goes to this little village and it turns out the church is like really bad or something. And he's rescued this girl. I'm sorry. That's all I remember. It just, it's not for me. But there are other people who are into literary fiction books and that's just not me. I don't know when I'm going to accept that these kind of books just aren't for me. There's hope. There's hope. This is another Between the Covers recommendation and I've had my eye on it for a while anyway. It is Love Marriage by Monica Arley. This is a chunky girl. Like, look at her. She's like 500 pages long. And I won't lie, it took me about 150 to 200 pages to get into this. But it is like so joyous, so warm. I really enjoyed it. It follows Yasmin and her family. It's basically themes of family, friendship, love. And also like quite funny at times. So she is engaged to Joe, who's, they're both doctors, her and her fiancé. Joe's like quite wealthy and then Yasmin's part of like this like apparently disjointed family. And they've all got their secrets, as most families have I presume. I was really torn with Jasmine. I hate, loved and hated her throughout. But it's basically her in the NHS, she's a junior doctor, basically finding, finding out more about herself and ultimately finding out what is a love marriage. So she's engaged, but her fiance Joe cheated on her and she does the most unspeakable thing, which is so out of character. She cheats on him multiple times with the same guy. It also beautifully and like really sensitively addresses like issues of racism, culture and things like she would experience in the NHS and just being in society. So like her and her brother and her family. And I just love how it all comes together in the end. Like all the little loose ties are perfectly tied up Together. yeah i really recommend this it is like quite chunky but once you get into it like i said like so to start i've seen other people say this as well but it's you soon get into it and i can see why it's got rave reviews we're on to our final one thank you for making this far if you did it is the boy in the striped pajamas by john Boyne. this has been on my to read list for years i want to say over the past like 10 plus years maybe 15 like since school i knew i would love this i love the film with Aja Butterfield. I think that's how you say his name. It's basically told through Bruno's eyes. He is this child and his dad is father commandant in Nazi Germany and they've moved to Poland, but he doesn't realise that. They are now living at Outwith. I think you can understand what that means. It is albeit sad, this whole thing. I found myself like, it was just so beautifully written, really moving. Like he's done the perfect job writing this. In fact, I think it took him only two days to write the full manuscript and then there was like loads of editing after so yeah but he has got this so perfectly right and it's told through bruno's naive childish eyes that everything is just okay and he meets Schmuel, who is on the other side of a fence but doesn't realize he's actually in a concentration camp it's a very cute very sensitive warming oh no i probably not warming but the relationship they have is so warm albeit in this cold harsh environment and it's just perfectly told like his youth comes through the thing that got me most was Pavel who works as a waiter in the house and Bruno has been playing he cuts his leg and he rushes out and treats Bruno first aid kit and everything and naively Bruno's like how do you know how to do that basically and it's like you're not a doctor like I am well, I was. Obviously, he's not allowed to admit that. And just like, I found myself really tearing up. Like, you were something, but it's been taken away from, from you. Whilst this is so sad, I really love this. And I hope others enjoy it as much as I did. I know hundreds of thousands of people have read this. So yeah, it's a winner. That is all my books for the month. I can't believe I got through 13 books. But yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you for making it this far if you did. Hit subscribe. It'd be great to have you here. And I'll see you soon. Bye.